In this class, we're going to look at the concept of series, but not the world series that you may be used to, uh, the baseball fest that is celebrated every fall. We're going to talk, of course, about a mathematical kind of series. And what is that? Well, we're going to start from a sequence, one of those things that we've seen in the last class. Uh, so that is a function that has the natural numbers as uh, domain, and therefore that can be represented by just a sequence of numbers, a1, a2, a3, which goes to infinity, and whose behavior at infinity we are interested in. Starting from any sequence like this, we're going to construct a different object, which in a way turns out to be a sequence. But the reason why we're going to do it is the following. First of all, this object is what we're going to call an infinite series, or again, just for short, a series. And what it is, is a formal infinite sum. So the sum of all the terms of that sequence. So we're adding up all the terms of this sequence. Now, what that means is that we have to do something like a1 plus a2 plus a3 plus etc. etc. We know how to add finitely many numbers. I'm sure if I give you a set of numbers, uh, you can add them up. It may take a little bit of time, you may make some minor arithmetical mistake, but you know how to do it. The point is, how do we ever add up infinitely many numbers? That seems to be a task which doesn't make any sense, right? Well, we're going to give it sense in a way similar to what we did with improper integrals. Remember, in improper integrals, we had to add up. Uh, we started by wanting to add up strips over a finite interval, and then we extended the idea to infinitely many. Same idea here. So the way we're going to do it is the following. First of all, given that initial sequence, we're going to define a partial sum, or actually all the partial sums of this series as follows. We're simply going to define as sk, the kth partial uh, sum, as the sum from 1 to n of the terms of the sequence. So in other words, we're adding up the first k terms of the sequence. This is possible, simple, we know how to do it. Well, if we know how to do this, then it's not that difficult at this point to go to infinity. All we have to do is we have to use, yes, limits. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to define the series or the sum of the series as being the limit as k goes to infinity of sk. And it is the limit as k goes to infinity of the sum from 1 to k of our ans. So what we're going to do is we're going to uh, interpret the idea of an infinite sum by simply adding up more and more and more uh, terms of the sequence. Uh, each time we're, we're computing a finite sum, but then we're going to take the limit as the number of terms goes to infinity. One important point to keep in mind as we do this operation is the following. The definition combines the usual addition and the usual concept of a limit, but it also specifies the order in which the sum must be performed. What do I mean by that? Remember that we start from a sequence. The sequence is ordered, right? We have a1 coming before a2, a2 coming before a3, and so on. And therefore, in a similar way, when we're going to compute uh, the SKs, what are we going to do? Uh, or the, the partial sum, how is it made up? Well, we start from a1, and then we add to a1, a2, and then we add to a1 plus a2, a3, and then we add to this the next element, and so on and so on, all the way to the k, to the sum of all the first k's. This sequence is constructed in this way and is made up of these spatial sums. And this order has to be respected. It turns out that commutativity here may not be present. So in other words, if we change the way in which we order our sequence, the, the way in which the terms of the original sequence a1, a2, an is taken, well, the properties of the corresponding series may change. We're going to see that. Now, there are some situations, where some special conditions under which, in fact, it does not matter in which order we consider those terms, the series still ends up being the same, uh, having the same sum. But those are special situations, special conditions which we will, in fact, look at. Uh, but in general, do not assume that by changing the order of the terms, the sum does not change, as it happens for finite sums. It may change, and we're going to see examples of that as well.